And welcome into the Bruins Beat on CLNS Media, presented by Prize Picks. Use that promo code CLNS to get up to $100 cash back on that first deposit. And we're presented by Game Time. Go use that promo code CLNS to get twenty up to twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Uh, the NBA Finals are going on. Game time's the place. Game time's the place. And Prize Picks makes the games a little more fun. So, Prize Picks and Game Time. I am Evan Marinovsky. I'm solo today. It's just you and me. Just you and me. I like to do these every now and again. Just us talking today, the listener. It's a chill episode. This is a, this should be a little relaxing, you know? I'm not going to be as upbeat or up pace as I normally am. Um, do you guys like that? Uh, how fast, not how fast, but typically I like podcasts to go 25 to 45 minutes. I don't like going much longer than that. I don't like drawing things out, especially considering we do a lot of these. So I don't want to repeat myself a ton. Um, and your time is precious, but if you want, I, I don't know. I don't, you don't want two hours, do you? You don't want two hours for a show. it will be a lot of Bruins. Um, so anyways, this is a solo episode. It's just me. I think Connor's doing a solo poke the bear too. Um, just kind of our own end of the week thoughts. So make sure you go check that out as well. Um, hope y'all are having a good one. Uh, I think you'll hear this after game one of the NBA finals. So hopefully the Celtics pulled that one out. Um, and there's some things I want to talk about today. Uh, some I've touched on before, but new developments and some new stuff. Some new stuff uh, in terms of some media news that's come out that I want to give my two cents on, my takes. Um, but we'll start here. So uh, the other day, uh, Mike Moriel from the uh, NHL draft combine talked to uh, Tom Fitzgerald, the GM of the New Jersey Devils. And uh, Tom Fitzgerald mentioned that the Devils are open to trading the number 10 pick. And they're also looking for a goalie. Um, so just to give you the quotes, uh, Tom Fitzgerald said, if we feel it helps us now and in the foreseeable future, then yes, I'm listening. I haven't gotten anything yet, but m- the more I talk to teams, I say, listen, I'm open to moving number 10, but it's going to have to be something significant. Uh, at the end of the day, we're in a position now versus two years ago when we drafted Simon Nemec, where if we can find the right piece to help us get to where we want to go today, tomorrow, and wherever the controllable future is for that player, great. That's the mindset versus great. We have a top 10 pick, and this kid is going to be fantastic when he's 25 years old. So that whole thing is saying, hey, we are, we need help now. A, a number 10 pick most likely is not coming to your team for two to three years. Uh, the Devils are in a very much win now mode. And then they also need this. He mentioned this about goaltending. I'm in the goalie market talking to teams, but there's a but. There's a but on the goalie market. Huh, interesting. Uh, but there's a but. And the but is how do we want to build our team? Would like to add up front, would like to add on the back end. So what are those pieces going to cost us? With the goaltending, what's that going to cost us? And if you guys recall, on the last Bruins beat, I mentioned this to Connor Ryan. uh, In terms of getting your next franchise, true number one center, right? The the guy that you're going to hope to have for quite a while, um, someone that you you know, a cornerstone of your franchise. Elias Lindholm kind of fits that bill, but he's also 30. So again, like, you know, if the Bruins did sign an Elias Lindholm, he's a number one center for the next three to four years. Um, You know, we'll see what happens with age. We'll see where his fit is, all that stuff. But in terms of a homegrown guy, like your best bet is through the draft. I've said that. I said that all last year after Bergeron and Krejci retired. I said it, (laughs) I've said it all season. I'll say it again. That is your best bet. That is your best bet. Um, And again, you know, via trade, do you have the pieces to do it? Like ultimately your best young pieces to trade are Patra, Lowry, Swayman. Those three could probably be the centerpiece of a deal to go out and get a true legit number one center. 
but you're not trading Swayman. And I see the trade Swayman stuff. I see there a fair there's a fair amount of fans who will say keep Olmark, trade Swayman because Swayman has more value. You got yourself a, a legit, potentially elite number one goalie at his age. You hold on to that. You hold on to that. And we've been over this. Um, you know, it's yes, there are team, there are goalies like Stuart Skinner and Aiden Hill and Jordan Binnington who get their teams to cup finals and they they win, and that's terrific. But for every one of those stories, there's six others, seven, ten, whatever, others. There's lots more others of just teams that fills out in the first round, and then they need a goalie. And then they need a goalie. You you don't have to be one of those teams. Uh, you don't want to be one of those teams. You hold on to Jeremy Swayman. Mason Lowry. Unicorn kind of defenseman. 6'5", great skater. Great skill, high offensive upside. Um, definitely some work in his own zone to be done, but serviceable. And a guy who's a potential top pairing left shot defenseman. You you hold on to those guys, especially at six five. Now again, I Mark Diver and I talked about this last week. You know, is Mason Lorai going to become a bruiser who is you know taking guys down left and right in front of his own net? No, no, he's not. Probably not. But you'll take whatever he gives you if he's putting up, you know, in his prime, 45, 50 points a season. Like, I don't think that's crazy, and I'm not trading that. And you can call me a homer all you want. You can call, you can say I have Bruins colored glasses on. I'm not trading him right now. I'm just not. And Matt Potter is a center, <laughs> a young center with a lot of promise, who looks to be, at the very least, uh, at the very, very least, a middle six center. Um, most likely a number two center based off what we've seen, based off hands, compete, hockey IQ in the, you know, number two center for the future. And if he turns into a number one center, then perfect. <laughs> That's great. But you're not trading those guys and you don't have many picks to trade. You don't have a lot of other young players worth a ton. You know, Fabian, the days of Fabian Lysel going for uh, or being a, the main piece of a package are probably done um, until he raises the value more. So your best bet's the draft. And this is the move. <laughs> this is you. The Bruins should be hitting up the New Jersey Devils right now and saying, what's it going to take to do Linus Olmark for the number 10 pick? Or, um, you know, Linus Olmark to them, or Ty Anderson's big on uh, Dawson Mercer and another pick. Like, what's it going to take to do that kind of move? And I'm fine with the move I just mentioned, Dawson Mercer. But I love the idea of a high-end first-round pick. And I know, I know they're lottery tickets. I do. I get that. But you need a good lottery ticket. <laughs> this team needs one. This team needs one. And I just mentioned a few seconds ago, you think about um, the guys in Providence who are developing or, or below that, right? Your Chris Pelosi's, your Beckett Hendrickson's. Um, is there anyone in there that's high end that you're expecting to reach the NHL level and pop? Not really. No. And so again, you need kind of an infusion of one or two young pieces who are, who have a high ceiling. And there are, you know, we mentioned this on poke the bear. There are some interesting names uh, in that range of, you know, six to 13 in the draft. You'll have your chance at some solid centers. Berkeley Caton was a guy that we mentioned. Um, gets Logan Cooley comps. He's, I think, I think Corey Pronman of the Athletic had him ranked like sixth. Um, but that's a guy that if, it, if he falls to you at 10, you take, you take. Caden Lindstrom, I think, was another one. I don't have the official thing in front of me, and I'm not an expert on draft prospects around the world. I'd say I'm a pretty, I would say, relatively speaking, I'm an expert on New England draft prospects. You want to talk about Cole Eiserman, Teddy Stiga, Ben Merrill, Caden Harrington, Joe Connor, Owen Keith, Gio DeJulian. You want to talk about those guys? I can tell you whatever you need to know. But in terms of, you know, Berkeley, Caton, and those guys that from outside of here, not as up on. Um, but again, there's your shot. 
there's your chance at number 10. Um, now, the question is, would Lena Solmark be able to go to New Jersey straight up for the number 10 pick? I think if you can get a contract extension done with Lena Solmark, I think New Jersey does that. I do. Or there's at least a chance. Because for them, you're filling a need full stop. So this offseason, you'll be able to say, hey, all we did was give up the number 10 pick, and we got a legit number one goalie who won the Vezina a year ago. Now, it takes time for goalies to adjust to new environments. I actually have a story for New England Hockey Journal coming soon. If you guys want to check it out, I think it's going to drop on Monday. Um, I mean, I'm the one dropping it, so I, I it's scheduled for Monday, so I don't see why I wouldn't go Monday. Uh, on the development path of young goalies from the ages of 14 to about 18, 19, college age. Uh, fascinating stuff. Um, I was not a goalie growing up. I'm not a goalie guru, but it was fascinating to talk to a lot of people who are goalie gurus. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but again, Lena Solmark goes to New, if Lena Solmark were to go to New Jersey, I mean, it's a perfect fit for them. It is. And I, I know there's a lot of people who want Lena Solmark to go for a top six center, um, or to get players in return. And, and that's terrific. Like if you can pull that off, whether it's like Marty Natchez or someone else, great. I'm all for it. But if you did just deal them for a high end first round pick, you're getting the cap space. So you can go out and sign a higher end player or trade for a higher end player. Um, if you somehow find the pieces to do that, most likely that'd be free agency that you would use that cap space. So um, this seems like a great opportunity. It, it is. Now, again, I haven't even mentioned this. Lena Solmark has to want to go to New Jersey. That's the other part of this. Um, and that's going to take some convincing from the Bruins. If he, if that's, you know, if that team is uh, on his no trade list. Um, but I mean, again, number 10 pick, I'm all for it. Let me know what you guys think. Tweet at me, comment on this video. What do you think? I mean, would that be a trade that you would want the Bruins to make? Uh, someone recently reached out to me on Twitter, and I don't have the tweet in front of me, um, but they they mentioned Sean Monahan in Winnipeg. Um, he's an it's an interesting case. I think Monahan got a little bit overrated at the deadline last year just because teams needed centers. Um, and teams now with deadlines want to get out ahead of the actual day and make trades weeks in advance to try to get lower prices. Monahan still went for a first. Um, he's a good middle six center. You have enough of those. The Bruins have enough middle six guys, Zaka, Coyle, Geeky, Patra at the moment. Like you don't really need a Sean Monahan. Um, if you had two legit top six centers and your third line needed a boost, then my God, like take, you take Sean Monahan. Um, but, uh, I, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not big on signing Sean Monahan. Uh, there's more I want to get to in terms of, uh, signings as well as who should, who should you guys be rooting for in the Stanley cup Panthers or the Oilers? The answer might seem pretty obvious. I don't know. Just think about that. I'll talk. We'll talk. Let me know what you think. Uh, but first, quick word from our friends over at Prize Picks. The finals are right around the corner, and it's time for you to get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your cash on Prize Picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level with the title on the line. With Prize Picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. With Prize Picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make a prize picks lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and you're locked in. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Get on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community today. The finals mean more on prize picks and so do the star players. You get boosted payouts on select basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and a huge selection of plays and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. And with the Celtics season still in full swing, there's plenty of opportunity to participate in Prize Picks. This week on Prize Picks, I'm selecting Jalen Brown for more than 25 points and Derek White for more than seven assists. So download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, use code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now, let's get back to the show. So, uh, I find this to be interesting. Before we get to um, 
who who you should root for in the Stanley Cup. Um, I, he, so David Pagnotta tweeted uh, the other day. Uh, the NHL, the NHL Bruins. <laughs> I almost read the hashtag. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's just me. I have no need for hashtags. None. Stop using the hashtags. Like if I'm gonna look up what the Bruins did in a game, and you know, I'll I'll just search Bruins. I'm not gonna search like hashtag NHL Bruins. Um, or like you know, like with the Panthers. I think it's like hashtag time to hunt. Who is searching hashtag time to hunt? I don't get that. Just tweet the team name. God, I, I I see like high end insiders doing this or other people. I don't get the hashtags. I know that the team logo is next to it. I have no need for it. Just tweet the team name, please. Um, so David Magnota, I don't want to. I don't want my little rant that overshadow what he said. Uh, the Bruins are expected to speak with Danton Heinen's camp this week and start discussions on a potential new contract. Heinen is one of Boston's nine pending UFAs. This is interesting. So. Danton Heinen had a really strong uh, season this past winter and overachieved. I mean, at least in terms of what our expectations were for him, given he was on a you know PTO at the beginning, earned a contract, and became a Swiss Army knife who could play anywhere. Um, he works hard. He plays hard. He can play in any situation. He can play anywhere in the lineup. You can slot him in the top six. You can put him on the fourth line, the third line, uh, PK. like. He is as responsible and as well-rounded a player uh, as you can find at that price point. Here's my thing with re-signing him. It better be at a, at a good price. Um, I don't know what teams are going to value him at. I don't know what the market's going to look like when it opens on July 1st. Um, I know the Athletic, I think, speculated he'd make like four years times three million or it was three years times four million. I want no part of that if I'm the Bruins. I don't. And it's nothing against Danton Heinen. It's not because, oh, Danton Heinen, you know, he's not worth the money. I think for a team that needs a good, reliable third liner who can potentially slot in up top, he's a perfect fit. He's a perfect fit. Um, but this team has enough of those guys. Your third line is pretty much, at least right now, already set for next year. Frederick, Geeky, Brazo, does Patra start the year in Boston? Because if so, he's probably on that third line. So then, like, you add Patra to the mix. Um, you have enough of those guys. You do. I mean, depending on what they do at center, could Charlie Coyle be moving? Could, could be, could he be moving down there? Now, if you're, if you want to trade a Brazo or a Frederick or a geeky, then, sh and you want to keep Heinen. Sure. If you feel his offense is better and you know, the upside is there. Great. I mean, I think Heinen fits in better in the top six than probably Frederick does at this point. And I think of your third liners, Heinen, Fits up there better. I mean, Geeky's like on par, but you know, Heinen can slot in. But you have those guys. You have enough of those players. Your money should be spent on top, true top six talent uh, this offseason and in net and a veteran left shot defenseman. You don't need Heinen. You just don't. Um, as I said, if you trade one of those guys, then sure, like that's okay. You can bring Heinen back, but. Um, if you're not going to make any subsequent moves and it's just, Oh, we're going to bring back Danton Heinen for three years and 3 million. Why? Like you've got enough of those guys. Um, so I, you know, again, awesome season, feel good season. If they get them at the right price, great. And as you guys know, this is a pro players getting the bag con uh, podcast. So if Danton Heinen secures 4 million somewhere here or anywhere, we're going to say, Hey, Props to Danton Heinen. Go get your money. But if it's with the Bruins, we're going to say, well, what are the Bruins? What's their plan there? Are they moving someone out from the third line? Or are they just going to do internal competition? Um, so again, love Danton Heinen, the player. I just think you have enough of players who are going to be on that third line next year. I do. Um, in terms of who the Bruins, who uh, Bruins fans should root for in the cup. This is not as easy as last year. Last year was simple. Bruce Cassidy. Easy. Easy. Layup. Oh, my God. Panthers took you out. Bruce Cassidy, you were like, where are you, Bruce? We need you back, Bruce. That's what fans, I think, were saying. Maybe that's what you were saying in front of your TV. Um, this year, it's tougher. I know everybody hates the Panthers, uh, around here at least. 
So I think a lot of people are going Oilers. There's one little scenario with the Oilers, though, and we've talked about it with Leon Dreisaitl. Uh, if he's fed up, not wanting to sign an extension, not wanting to re-sign and looking elsewhere. The Bruins have a good history uh, with German players. Him and Pasternak are, are, are good buddies. That, this could be a fit. This could be a really good fit for him. Um, so there is that end of it where it's like, oh, if the Oilers lost, like maybe he's fed up. Or maybe if the Oilers win, he's like, all right, well, I'm done here. I've won one. I want to go somewhere else and I want to be my own star. Maybe that's maybe that happens. And it's like, all right, well, go Oilers. Um, but there is that end of it where if they if they win, it's like, all right, well, we got something good going here. You know, we're going to keep this thing rolling. I'm going to resign here. Um, so Leon Dreisaitl would be my only reason that you might want to hold off on rooting for the Oilers. But then you look at the other side and it's like, well, do you want Kachuk and Sam Bennett and that Panthers team to win one after they've taken you out two straight years? Um, I don't think Bruins fans particularly want that. I think the Panthers, as Connor and Ryan and I have talked about this quite a bit, serve as a really good example of what you should strive to be in terms of roster building with, you know, centers. Um, you, you know, look at like Lindell, good solid second or third line center, but propped up well by good wings and um, guys who are fast, speedy, get in on four checks, uh, get in on pucks hard, things like that. Um, so I would say probably the Oilers, but there is that one little Leon Dreisaitl thing where it's like, hmm, hmm, what's it going to take to get him here? Come on. So yeah, probably the Oilers. I think that starts Saturday. That series, uh, I believe, starts Saturday, which is wild. It's starting this late. We're already getting the, uh, uh, we're already getting like the, um, the throwbacks for like, oh, Bruins in the 2019 Cup. This was like Game Five, June sixth, and it's like, yeah, it starts June eighth, this Saturday, um, 8 p.m. in Florida. So, um, interesting stuff there. If you want to go to that game, you want to fly down for some reason, go to that game. Uh, go check out our good friends over at Game The Time. NBA Finals are right around the corner, and if you're a Celtics fan, odds are that TD Garden is going to be packed in June as the Celtics go for Banner 18. And if you want to cheer on the seas inside the Garden, you got to go with Game Time Tickets. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace that makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. And the best part about Game Time tickets, you can browse through the Game Time app to find great seats at affordable prices for all sorts of in demand games, concerts, and other events. Want to snag last minute tickets to a concert? Game Time tickets has you covered. Maybe a Sunday matinee game at Fenway Park, or one of those spur of the moment Friday night games watching the Sox. And with the Patriots and Bruins season set to get started later on in the fall, you can't go wrong with going to the Game Time app to find tickets ahead of time. It's really that easy in the action. And with flash deals and zone deals available, you can make it to some of the most in-demand games at the last second. With these last-minute deals, you can save up to 60% off buying seats for sporting events, concerts, comedy, theater shows, and a whole lot more. Some of my favorite features of the app include seat views, where you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, and the lowest price guarantee, or else Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So what are you waiting for? Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Now let's get back to the show. So uh, Bruins fans got some tough news on Wednesday. Uh, obviously, Jack Edwards has retired. The Bruins play by play job is open and everybody wanted Dave Gosher. And rightfully so. I mean, that is the that would have been the perfect person. I mean, he was the voice for them uh, on radio for 98.5. Um, had the infamous, uh, not the infamous, the famous Bergeron, Bergeron call uh, in 2013 and would have been the perfect guy for TV, the perfect guy to take over for Jack. Uh, but he is currently the uh, play-by-play guy for the Vegas Golden Knights. And he went on Mix 94.1, which is uh, Vegas's number one pop station. So that would be like, that would be like uh, a local, that'd be like, you know, Dave O'Brien 
voice of the Red Sox going on like Kiss 108 with like Billy Costa being like and Billy being like, so uh, Dave, are you sticking around in Boston? You know, that'd be like going on like a Kiss 108 or a like Country 1025 or something like that. You know, like I don't know how he ended up on a pop station. I don't know why he didn't go on like a sports radio station in Vegas, but he went on Mix 94.1. And uh, he says it and like the room goes nuts. Like you would have thought everyone in the room just got a million dollars. Like there was a woman across from him who was like sits back in her seat like, oh, oh my God. Like and there's a, they cut to another guy who's like clapping his hands, which in fairness, if he came here, we'd be doing the same reaction. Would have the same reaction if Dave Gosher decided to leave Vegas to come to Boston. That's a hit. It's unfortunate that uh, he's going to stay in Vegas, but good for him, first of all, for finding you know, a long-term home, every play-by-play person. That's what they want. Um, so to get one is a big deal. Um, but he would have been perfect. Dave Gosher uh, would have been perfect. Um, you know, just given his history here, he's from here. Um, he's called a lot of NHL games before. Um, but again, there are other options. Uh, you look at like Alex Faust. Um, Alex Faust, uh, you know, has has done Bruins games in the past. I believe he was with the Kings, uh, with the LA Kings for a little bit. He does some TNT. Um, you also have Mike Monaco, who does games for ESPN, does Red Sox games. Um, to me, those are the two guys I'm looking at. Again, I'm I'm not the one making the call at Nesson. I don't have inside information on this. Um, but those two, you know, seem like target guys who you would get one of them and have them be the voice of the Bruins for the next 20 to 30 years. Now, again, no one knows what anyone's doing in the future. It's hard to predict. Um, people leave jobs for different reasons. But those are two, you know, younger guys who, you know, doing national stuff, well-respected, good announcers, who I think would be really good fits. Um, I haven't listened to either enough to have, like, a true favorite. Um, I think, you know, Faust was with the Kings for a little bit. Um, Mike Monaco, as I said, does Red Sox games. Um, I'd be fine with either of them. I'd be fine with either of them. I mean, it's a very desirable job. To be the play-by-play voice for an original six franchise is huge. Um, And I can imagine that there's probably no shortage of applicants. So those would be my two. Dave Gosher was obviously the number one choice, just given his history here. But I think if you get Faust or Monaco, uh, that's perfect. So they could give it to someone else that I don't even know uh, or a name I'm forgetting for some reason. Bring back Doc Emmerich. Bring back Doc for a couple seasons just to, I mean, I think every, that'd be like a hundred percent approval rating. Like, come on back, Doc. I mean, I miss Doc Emmerich like crazy uh, on these national broadcasts. I think he was perfect. You, look, you go back and watch highlights of uh, any playoff run from the last, you know, 20, 30 years. And you hear Doc's voice and it's like, holy crap he was outstanding um i mean you could do the whole gauntlet of amazing um announcers you know the late dave strader um whose son was a math teacher at my high school by the way Uh, i never got to have him but anytime i saw him we would talk nhl yeah dave strader was outstanding um gary thorne his grandson is actually uh, Gio DeGiulian, a kid I mentioned earlier, um, who's a NHL draft candidate, probably going to get drafted, and he plays at Kent, the prep school in Connecticut. Um, again, Gary Thorne's older. I don't know if he would uh, want to take on you know the the daily grind of uh, Bruins play by play job. But again, Monaco, Faust, I think those are two strong candidates, two very strong candidates. Um, other media news: uh, Thursday morning. The NHL announced that uh, Amazon Prime or Prime Video, whatever you want to call it, uh, is doing like a uh, a quarterbacks version. I don't know if you guys have seen quarterbacks or full swing um, uh, that that I think they're both on Netflix. There's also an F1 version I have not seen. Um, They are uh, doing like a behind the scenes with certain players from this playoff run. Um, And it'll be coming out in the fall. And the two Bruins players are Jeremy Swayman and David Pasternak. And the trailer looks electric. The trailer looks terrific. Um, So, uh, again, the series will feature in-depth interviews with key players, their rivals, and those in their closest inner circle, teammates, coaches, family. The series will also reveal what life on and off the ice is really like for the league's top players. From the quiet, reflective moments to the speed and intensity of being on hockey's biggest stage, revealing the talent, grit, and sacrifice it takes uh, to make it in the NHL. Superstar players followed in the series include McDavid, Kachuk, 
Jacob Truba, Leon Dreisaitl, Pasternak, Swayman, Quinn Hughes, Jack Eichel, William Nylander, Philip Forsberg, uh, and Gabriel Landeskog. That's going to be a fascinating one. Landeskog, given all he's been through, um, going behind the decision-making there, that's going to be really interesting. Uh, in addition, Cruz will remain embedded with McDavid, Kachuk, and their teammates, families, and friends during the Panthers and Oilers' pursuit of uh, hockey supremacy in the, in the Cup Final. I am going to be all over this. The Bruins are fortunate, and you Bruins fans are really fortunate to have Behind the B. Uh, Behind the B is a great look at the ins and outs. I know, obviously, it's through the Bruins, so it's, you know, a Bruins. It, it's not, you know, it's it's pro-Bruins, um, but it's still a phenomenal and phenomenally done TV show. I'm really curious to see what this is. I wonder if this is going to be kind of like uh, Road to the Winter Classic um, in that, you know, behind the scenes, locker room speeches. That's what we want. That's what everybody wants to see. These are the kinds of shows we eat up. Um, Quarterbacks on Netflix was phenomenal. I've never watched Full Swing or the F1 um, show. Um, I don't. I want to say it's the same crew that did Full Swing that's doing this. Um, could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. I don't. It's definitely. I don't think it's not the same one as quarterbacks. Um, but it looks really good. I'm very intrigued by it. Um, is there talk of like Swayman's contract on this at all? Does he make any mention of that? Um, Postrock was in the trailer. Um, so I'm excited for this. Again, it's not till the fall, unfortunately, as we head into you know after the Cup and the NBA Finals end. It's the doldrums of sports. Got like. The Red Sox, who are like the most mediocre team on planet Earth. You got like the Little League World Series in August. Um, WNBA is in full swing. A lot of drama over there. Um, but so thankfully we'll have uh, the uh, this documentary to look forward to come next fall. Um, so yeah, that's been this solo Bruins beat. I think we covered everything. You know, number 10 pick with the Devils, Heinen, Voice of the Bruins, documentary, who should you guys root for, all that stuff. Uh, so again, make sure to subscribe to the Bruins Ringside YouTube channel, subscribe to New England Hockey Journal, uh, and always listen to these. Thank you for all your support through the seasons. And uh, yeah, that's this week's Bruins Beat. I'm Evan Marinovsky, Bruins Beat listeners. A great rest of your week.